Here's the stress tensor. So what does it mean if T11 is big? Well, T, T1, let's talk about T12 first. Um, T12 would be the, uh, let's say you got like, like the X, Y, Z, instead of X, Y, and Z axis, you're talking about a number one axis, number two axis, and number three axis. But those are just X, you know, that's usually what they call X, Y, and Z. And then you've got a plane that's normal to the the one axis, or you can call it the X1, X2, and X3 axes instead of X, Y, and Z. So you've got a plane that's normal to X1. I would call that the number one plane orientation. Then you got one that's normal to X2. I'd call that the n number two plane orientation. Then you could have a plane that's normal to X3, and I'll call that the number three plane orientation. All right, now, so if you have something like uh, T12, that's talking about a plane number two orientation, and the stress is acting in the number one direction. You've got something like t two, you know, T23, that's the three plane, and you're going in the two direction with the stress so it's in general if you got like tij it's the it's the number j plane orientation and the i is the direction of the stress all right so so what does it mean if t11 is big first you got to consider this plane with the one orientation so if you, if you draw it so X and Y are on the table and Z is coming out of the table, <laughs> I'm talking about the, take a look at the one axis which would be going along the table. So if you looked at some normal, it, it'd be like a plane that's perpendicular to your table. Okay. And you've got this object. And this, this plane divides the object. I'm not saying you actually cut the object in half, but you imagine that a plane is cutting this object and, and it's... and the normal to the plane is in the x1 direction. And then the, there's... what you're, if this T11 gets really big, that would mean that um, Basically, one the your your plane's going to divide the object into two. It, it means that half of the object is pulling on the other. But you you gotta you gotta consider that uh, it can be. Let's let's say that the stress tensor is the same all over the object, just to make this easier to descri describe. Otherwise, I've got to talk about what the stress is at every single point. It's going to be different. But if we say that the stress tensor is the same everywhere, then I can just say, okay, T11 means that one half of the object is pulling on the other half of the object along this plane with a certain amount of stress. Uh, and then T21 is, is like, instead of, I mean, T11, you're, you're pulling perpendicular to this plane. When you, we're talking about T21, you're, you're pulling in the, you're pulling like in a, in a way that go, goes parallel to the plane that the thing is divided. So one, one half of the object is, is pulling on the other like that. And then T31 is is again it's it's pulling with in the, the the stress is in the direction of the plane so it's it's pulling creating a, a shear you know t21 t31 are creating the shear one half of the object pulling on the other half half of the object now if you say like the normal is that you're talking about is 
one zero zero or well it could be zero one it could be it could be any normal let's let's just pick a unit normal so that we can use this stress tensor the way that you use it is you just multiply it by the unit normal that is normal to the plane that you're interested in and, and there's there's this convention that the uh the, the way it's pointing goes like out of the uh the object that you're interested in so, so there's a difference between if you got the object divided in, into two there's a difference between it's two parts and, and one part you could call you know a and the other part you could call b and there's 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 a force that's a, a is applying to B, and there's a force that's B is applying to A. Those are two different things. And as it turns out, they're always the the force is always the same magnitude. It's just opposite. That's one of Newton's laws. So anytime you identify a normal, you're talking about the it's the the face of one side of this thing in the normal pop it goes shoots it goes out of the face and if you're talking about the face that's parallel to that right you know right parallel to it and facing it and right on top of it really it's like it's the other face um, then all you'd have to do is negate the normal to talk about that so there's two faces they're facing each other they're touching, they're connected, and you'd use a normal, let's say the normal is this vector 0, 1, 0, then the 0, negative 1, 0 would be the other face. Okay. That, that will kind of, I mean, so, so what you do when you want to, that, I think, I think that'll come into play, but what you do when you want to find the stress on a given surface is you just you figure out what the normal vector is for the surface and you multiply the stress tensor well the matrix form of it anyway you multiply this matrix by the the normal and then that gives you what the stress is on the plane and, and stress is I mean keep in mind that stress makes sense on a plane because it's it's an amount of force per unit area so you could define a stress on any size plane I and mean, you know it can be infinite or very extremely small and you could define a stress it would make sense um, In this case, what you're really talking about is something where the the stress tensor can vary with space, so that this, this if you look at this plane that's it's got a certain orientation, and you're looking at one little spot, then you can calculate the, the stress that's going to be applied. But I mean, if you move to another spot, it's going to be something different. If you move around the substance, it's going to change. So when I say, you know, I've divided it into two halves, and it's divided by a plane, and one substance is pushing on the other substance, uh, I mean, don't. it's not necessarily that the plane is a real plane that continues forever. What you're really talking about is an infinitely small surface, and that surface divides two parts of the material and, and one part of the material is putting a force on the other part of the material.